As you might know, I love creating microcontroller projects with the Arduino development board. But when it comes to visually inputting or outputting data, then I always have to settle with relatively unappealing 16x2 LCDs or OLED displays. From time to time though, I would love to use a huge display like a common monitor, which in this case comes with an HDMI, DVI and a VGA input. So I did some research on the VGA inputs and found out that it is actually not that hard to control. The internet on the other hand says that a microcontroller like an Arduino is not the perfect fit for such a task and that a so-called FPGA would be much more suitable. Of course, a more powerful microcontroller like the ESP32 can easily drive a VGA display which was proven by the BitLoonies Lab YouTube channel. But since I got myself an FPGA learning book along with an FPGA years ago and wanted to learn about the subject, I wanted to try out this route. Only problem was that this book did not do the trick for me. But luckily I recently discovered the tiny FPGA BX board which comes in an Arduino form factor and supports a more or less graphical programming software. So in this video, let's find out how FPGAs work, how we can program the tiny FPGA, do some simple examples with it and finally let's hook up a VGA display to it in order to see how easy it is to control. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB, who increased their orders by over 500 per day since the start of the new year. So why not upload your Gerber files today in order to test out their service and find out what gift you get in your PCB parcel. After unpacking the tiny FPGA board, we should firstly have a closer look at its main IC, the ICE40LP8K in order to understand FPGAs a bit better. So I searched for its datasheet and the first line of its introduction chapter says that it is an ultra low power non-volatile FPGA with up to 7680 lookup tables or LUTs. Since that is the first line, it seems like those LUTs are apparently very important of which the tiny FPGA BX IC does in fact have 7680, if you combine them with a flip-flop and call it a logic cell. And speaking of logic cells, if we look further in the datasheets, we can see that one looks like this, and 8 of them together form a programmable logic block, or PLB, which basically makes up the entire FPGA. And here comes the key information. You can program those programmable logic blocks in order to perform arithmetic and logic functions. That means you can turn them for example in a logic end, or or not gates, which like their names imply perform a logic function with the binary input signals and thus outputs a binary signal as well. Or you can use them as D-type flip-flops and thus save a binary signal whenever you want and then erase it when you don't need it anymore. Now if you have absolutely no clue what logic gates or flip flops are, then make sure to have a look at one of my videos in which I rebuilt the functionality of an Arduino program with them in hardware. And hardware is the keyword here, because with an FPGA, which stands for Field Programmable Gate Array, we basically wire up the input and output pins of it with the programmed logic blocks and thus create a proper logic circuit in hardware. That is a huge difference to a microcontroller, because there we write software or codes that targets a processor, which executes the instructions one at a time and line by line. With an FPGA, however, we basically got a hardware circuit that can handle multiple data signals simultaneously, which means it can do lots of tasks in parallel. 
And with the absolute minimum theory basics out of the way, let's connect a micro USB cable to the tiny FPGA and hook it up to my computer. According to the tiny FPGA BX user guide given by the manufacturer, I installed Python as well as IPIO and tinyproc, updated the bootloader of the tiny FPGA and finally installed Atom which is an open source text editor and IDE. After opening it, I installed the IPIO IDE and continued by importing the first example project that was linked in the beginner's guide. Now at this point you might think that this code looks pretty similar to microcontroller programming. But it is not, since it basically describes the hardware we want to build up. And it is done so with a hardware description language, or HDL. The most popular HDL are Verilog HDL and VHDL. And if you want to learn them in a fun way, then I would highly recommend checking out fpgaforfun.com, where you can find pretty awesome FPGA projects along with code explanations. But anyway, after uploading the example code, the LED on my FPGA board started blinking in Morse code, displaying SOS which means that everything worked out correctly. Now at this point we could learn an HD language, but I think a better way for beginners to understand FPGAs is by using the iStudio software. After installing and opening it, we can select the tiny FPGA BX board and thus start designing our own hardware circuits by using the basic blocks given by the software. As a first example, I wanted to create a circuit with a push button input and an LED output. The LED should blink with a defined frequency, but it can be turned on slash off at any time by a push of the input button. So I created an input called push button for which I use pin 1 and an output called LED for which I use pin 2. Then I added a pull up block in combination with a debounce block in order to get a clean defined voltage signal from the push button. Next I imported a TFF block or toggle flip flop block, which by double clicking it seems to consist of a D type flip flop and a NOT gate. Its job is to basically toggle its outputs when I hit the push button. Next I imported the prescaler N block which basically creates a clock signal with a variable frequency depending on the prescaler n value. So I created a constant block and set the value n to 23, which later equals a blink frequency of 1.9 Hz. I connected this slowed down clock frequency along with the processed push button voltage signal to a logical end which, like the name implies, will only activate its outputs and thus the LED when both input signals are high. And just like that, we got our hardware logic circuit. Which means that after adding the tiny FPGA to a breadboard and soldering it to male headers, as well as adding all of the components to the circuit, it was time to upload the codes. And as you can see, everything works like we planned it. By the way, the tiny FPGA operates at 3.3V levels. And if we have a closer look at the iStudio software, then we can not only find some rather interesting learning examples, but also that each block is basically only HDL codes. Which means you can even learn HDL programming with the software. And with that being said, it was time to get back to my VGA display for which I got myself this breakout adapter. The only pins we truly care about are 1, 2, 3, 13, 14 and grounds, which are used for red, green, blue, horizontal sync aka H-sync and vertical sync aka V-sync. The H-sync and V-sync are basically digital signals with a very precise timing which tell the display when one line is finished, which does the async, and also when all the rows are done being displayed, which does the vsync. 
The RGB voltage signals are analog signals with a maximum of 0.7 volts. And during each pixel time of the H-Sync, they are used to generate the specific color of each pixel. But like previously mentioned, if you want all the details about the VGA protocol, then better have a look at Bitlooney's video. Nevertheless, creating such an async and vsync signal was not possible for me to do at this point. That is why I searched online and found this FPGA Pong game created by Yuan Mart. It even came with an iStudio file, which at first sight looks pretty complicated, but can teach you quite a lot about generating the correct VGA signals. So, after modifying the pins to suit my needs, connecting all of the wires and hooking up some push buttons for the control, it was time to upload the codes and have some fun with a classic Pong game. And with that being said, I will end my FPGA adventure for now. But if you want to learn more about the subject, then have a look in the video description where I placed tons of useful links. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hitting the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!